All right, Salim Rezaia here with another Walking the Line from Research to Practice. And the trial we're going to be talking about today is the PREPARE2 trial, IV fluid bolus prior to rapid sequence intubation. This is another study that was just published in the last couple of weeks. Now, the clinical question these authors were trying to answer is, in critically ill adult patients undergoing rapid sequence intubation with positive pressure ventilation, we'll talk about what that means in just a second, does a 500 cc bolus of crystalloid decrease the incidence of cardiovascular collapse? So a little history here. There was the original PREPARE trial, which was performed in 2019, trying to answer the same question. And they recruited about 300 patients. And when they looked at giving a fluid bolus and they looked at overall reduction in cardiovascular collapse, there was no difference. But in their subgroup analysis, there was one group of patients, and that was those getting positive pressure ventilation with bag valve mask. They did have less cardiovascular collapse, which led us to this trial, another randomized clinical trial performed in 11 ICUs in the United States. And these were patients undergoing rapid sequence intubation, and they got randomized to either getting a 500 cc bolus of fluids versus no bolus at all. Now, their primary outcome was cardiovascular collapse. And this is a composite outcome, and I'll talk about that in just a second, but there was really three main parts to this for what cardiovascular collapse meant. So it meant the use of pressors, increased dosages of pressors, or a systolic blood pressure of less than 65 millimeters of mercury that occurred any time between induction to two minutes after intubation. The second component of this was cardiac arrest, which occurred anywhere from induction to one hour after intubation, and then the third component of this was death, induction to one hour after intubation, so very similar to cardiac arrest. Now, between induction and laryngoscopy, patients had to be receiving some form of pre-oxygenation with either a bag valve mask or non-invasive ventilation. And that was exactly what that historical trial, PREPARE, done in 2019, that was the subgroup signal that they saw. So hypothesis generating, now let's prove if that hypothesis is actually true. So prepare to, when we look at the number of patients recruited, this is about a thousand patients. And when we look at the time of enrollment, 20% of patients were already on vasopressors and 10% were already getting fluids. And then if we look at the agents that were used for rapid sequence intubation, by far and away, the most common sedative was Atomidate in nearly three fourths of the population. And then rocuronium was the most common paralytic used in about also three quarters of the population. Now, when we look at the critical results of this composite outcome of cardiovascular collapse, there was no difference in cardiovascular collapse or any of the individual components, whether you gave a fluid bolus or not. Now, composite outcomes can be helpful when you have smaller trials, but they're also very problematic when requiring more vasopressors or starting a vasopressor is not the same patient-oriented outcome as cardiac arrest or dying. And so it's important to know which one of these components was the primary driver when you have a positive study. In this case, it was not a positive study. It was negative all the way across the board in all the individual components. But the thing that was the most common was requiring more vasopressors or increasing the dose of vasopressors or a subtle drop in blood pressure was the most significant component of cardiovascular collapse. The second problem with this study is that when we look at induction agent dosing, so the choice of induction agent used between groups was the same. But what's not clear to me is what dose of the agent was used, because we know it's not always about what agent is used and how that agent is given. And we know that at higher doses, we can cause more hypotension, but maybe at lower doses, that's not the case. We don't have that granular detail from this study. I'll tell you what I do in my clinical practice. And to me, the best fluid is vasopressors. And Commonly, if I have a patient who has a shock index that's concerning or I'm concerned that they're going to crash after I push medications, my go-to strategy is typically starting a vasopressor drip, getting it on the pump, and running it because it's titratable. I can then, from second to second, based on the patient's hemodynamics, titrate that up, titrate that down, but I'm now kind of being preventative and being proactive as opposed to reactive. Now, if that's not possible and you got to intubate the patient a little bit sooner, 
A second strategy would be push dose pressors, which I frequently had to do before as well to help mitigate that cardiac arrest and death. And then the final strategy, which I think has now been disproven, is giving a fluid bolus. So what's the clinical bottom line of this study? 500 cc's of fluid prior to intubation does not decrease the incidence of cardiovascular collapse. I would consider vasopressors in patients that you're concerned about. Thank you for tuning in. Leave me your thoughts, questions, and any comments down below. Until next time.